In this video, you'll see the, uh, the trip we made from the town of Kitgum in northern Uganda to an IDP camp in the north, about 20 miles south of the Sudan border. IDP camp stands for Internally Displaced People's Camp. Along the way, we met people going back to their villages, going back to working the fields. Um, as you probably know, for about 25 years, or a little, little under 25 years, there's been a major conflict in northern Uganda uh, between the LRA, which stands for the Lord's Resistance Army, and the government troops. So here we are on top of our Land Rover, driving across this beautiful, untouched land. And when I say untouched, that's because for years, people were too afraid to actually develop the land and to plant anything on the land. This is the land of the Acholi people, which is the, uh, the main tribe that lives in this area. It's also the, uh, the people who have suffered the most in this conflict. Thousands of people, most of the Acholi, um, have, had to been, have had to live in these IDP camps. Here you see a village that was presumably abandoned because of the conflict. Here you see an abandoned hut. And the roof is gone. Here's a remnant of the conflict. We found shells all over the place. Once in a while we would hear about people going back to the land and stepping on a landmine that had been left before the conflict. Here is the IDP camp Padibe. Padibe IDP camp holds about 43,000 people. As you see, the houses are very close together. And that's partly out of safety. That's also partly because of uh, lack of resources and, and limited amounts of space. When we set up, a lot of kids came running towards us. They were intrigued to see what we were up to. And most of these kids uh, don't go to school. In fact, I don't recall the exact amount but uh, more than 75% of the kids in the camp um, cannot go to school, as school um, costs money. And uh, the few students that actually go to school, elementary, secondary school, um, actually have to pay for it themselves by working on the weekends in the field, um, raising money, and that can amount to about $20 per semester. This is a typical scene in the IDP camp. That's a typical hut. And uh, you'll find a lot of this on the ground is they are drying uh, sorghum, which uh, makes up a large portion of the, uh, the food that people eat here. All the food that you see, that you find in the camp is grown within the confines of the camp or on the outskirts of the camp. This is a skin that is being, uh, a goat skin that is being dried for use on a chair. This gives you a, a view of the, the tops of the, uh, the huts. Most of the huts are covered with tarp. The tarps come, maybe you can see them you know, here and there. They come from UN agencies such as UNICEF, UNESCO. Now, on the day we recorded this, students were going back to school. They've been on vacation, working in the fields, and they were happy to go back. So this is the uh, students on their lunch break going home. Most of these kids have to, uh, have to actually walk to school every day. Um, most of them walk between three and, and five kilometers a day just to get there and back. We came across this party um, going, taking place in the camp and uh, the surprising thing is that there is no electricity in the camp and to play the music this man was powering a generator with the bicycle and there's me making a fool out of myself dancing with my hosts and it just goes to show that despite the hardships that these people have seen have gone through life continues this is Padibe Secondary School. 
This is where most of our broadcasts took place during the Uganda program. It's about three kilometers away from the city or the village center. Students either walk to school or they ride their bicycles if they have one. This is an incomplete building um, that is to house the chemistry and biology lab. It's a project that was undertaken by the students' teachers, uh, sorry, the students' parents a few years ago. They ran out of money, unfortunately, and through this program that we are doing with, uh, through this exchange program, we're hoping to raise enough funds to see this project to completion. And it may take a year, it may take you two years, but we're hopeful that uh, we will, we'll be able to make a big difference in these students' lives and really improve their school.